Hello everybody, this video is about graphing polynomials and it should help you get some intuition about how graphs look um, depending on a couple of different things that you can see within within the function itself. What I did here was I listed a bunch of points in the spreadsheet view, I'm sure you're familiar with how to do that by now, uh, and then I made that list of points uh, into points on the graph. You just highlight and right click create list of points and I already did that and my list of points is called list one. So what I want to do is create a curve fit uh, to make a polynomial, but I want to be able to change the order of the polynomial. I want to be able to do a first order polynomial and a second order and a third and so on. So uh, the way I do that, I go to the input bar and I'm going to say f of x equals, now the command is fit poly. Okay and it asks for a list of points and the degree of the polynomial. So the list of points is going to be list 1. And the degree of the polynomial is going to be controlled by this slider bar that I made right here, slider bar A, and it shifts from 1 to 6. So I'm going to go back to my fit poly and put an A as the order of my polynomial. So this will be able to be changed just by shifting the slider bar and there's first order, second order, third order, fourth order, fifth order, sixth order. Okay, and you can see with sixth order it gets really accurate. It hits every point that I want it to hit. Uh, whereas first order, you know, it, it's not very accurate. It's not hitting uh, all the points or even any of the points I don't think. Okay, so what are some things that are important? First of all, you need to think about your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts. So your x-intercept, we're going to call those uh, by a couple different names in math. We call them roots and zeros and x-intercepts and solutions to the equation when f of x is equal to zero. So f of x is the, the y-value, right? So f of x, when it's equal to zero, so when that function value equals zero, the solutions will be the x values that make that function equal to zero. So in this case, um, the value somewhere around 11, maybe 11 and a half. If I put 11 and a half into this function, it should give me a value that is about zero. Um, let me make a text box here so I can kind of see what that function is a little bit clearer. So I go to that text and click in the white space and then I edit make this f of x equals and my object is f and it should print that function for me. I like to put it on latex formula and hit OK. And that's a little small so I'm going to make it bigger. Object properties, text, make it large, OK and close the window. Alright so I want to change the color of that to red and also change that to red. Okay, so we're talking about um, roots or x-intercepts. Um, to highlight where those values are, I'm going to make another function called g of x, and I'm just going to set it equal to 0. So whatever x is, g of x is always equal to 0, and that is the same thing as the x-axis itself. I'll change the color just to make it show up better, make it blue. Okay, so the intersection point I can find going to this, so I just click that and that, and it should give me the intersection point. There we go. So that's intersection point is that point I, and I will see the value. So it looks like 11.66 is um, is the value that should make this equal to zero. And if if I put in, uh, let's try 11.66, and I put in equals f of that value, it should be close to zero. Yeah, you see it right there. Okay. Um, the other point to be interested in is the y-intercept. So that happens when x is equal to zero, right? So x is equal to zero, we're on the y-axis, and you see it right there and I could find my x-intercept is 
If I click that and that, it's going to give me the intersection point. There it goes. So point K, I'm going to change that to show me the value. Okay. And you see it's 6.16. And it always happens to be that it is this constant term right here. Because when x is equal to 0, that term drops out. Now you'll see that when I change my polynomial, if I go to second order or third order, it doesn't change, right? This is still 4.78, which is my constant term. My, whatever my constant term is, it's always going to be the y-intercept. So see, all these values turn to 0. It means that term will drop out, that term will drop out, that term will drop out, that term will drop out. And I'm left with 2.63, which is my y-intercept. Now you see here, um, the intersection of the function uh, f and g, now I have two solutions actually. So 10.53 and what's my other point? 13.63. So now I have two solutions that if I plug in 10.53 into my function, I will get a value of 0. And if I plug in 13.63, I would also get 0. So this one has two solutions. And it is possible if I move the points around that I could get even more more solutions. So right there, now I have even more solutions. So four solutions to that polynomial when when f of x is equal to zero. Um, so we have our roots. We have our y-intercept. See negative 2.9394, which is again the constant term. And another thing that you always want to look at is the first term, because this is what dominates the function. And if it is positive, you will have a certain sort of graph. And if it is negative, you'll have sort of the opposite sort of graph. Um, let's go back to that. OK, so when f is, when the first term is negative in a linear function, it's sloping down, right? You remember that, that the slope, when the slope is negative, uh, it's going down and to the right. And if I move one of these points, so it's kind of matching the graph. And let's see, let's move this down a little. So now I have a, a positive value, and it's going up and to the right, right? So if I made it completely flat, let's see if I can get a list of points that does that. That's pretty flat right there. You see that my x term is going to 0. So basically, whatever my x value is, my y value is always 2.25. So we have what's called a zero slope line. So that sort of dominates how things look, is what that first term is. So even when I go to a second order, if I look at this, if it's positive, it looks a certain way. What does it look like if it goes negative? Well, if it goes to zero, right, then that term drops out. I'm left with a linear equation. And if it goes even more negative, now I have a, a different sort of equation. It's a U shape going down instead of going up. So it kind of flips the orientation of it. It goes from being a U shape going up to a U shape going down. In between, it's a line. right? Um, and you see that here. So this is now it's going down up high to down low. And if I am able to switch it to now positive value, it's going from down low to up high. Um, another thing to notice is the order of the polynomial. So if it is an odd number, so 1, 3, or 5, 1, uh, it's, it goes from low to high. And it could go from high to low, right? And then 3, it goes from low to high, but it could go from high to low. And 5, it goes from high to low, but I could move my points around in such a way. Let's see. Could make it low to high, right? If I do it a certain way. <laughs> there we go. OK, so low to high. But yeah, there's an even better picture. OK. so. You can see that odd powers, they go from either low to high or high to low. Even powers always make a sort of U shape. So even power, it's a U. Four, now it's a U with two squiggles, right? 
and uh, maybe you could say a W, right? W, and I could even make it look more like a W. Uh, there we go. So W, and I I don't know if there's such thing as triple U, but we could do that with the sixth power, right? Triple U. <laughs> So even powers look like a U, odd powers look like a S. And you can see again, even with the sixth power, see my, I know my, even though I can't see it on my graph, I know my Y intercept is 386.02. So that's a little bit about the intuition of how polynomial graphs work. So we've talked about Y intercepts, X intercepts, and what that first term tells us, how its orientation is going to be. And by the way, it's, if it's positive, that means the more positive values you're going to get, the more positive the function's going to get. If it's negative, it means the more positive the values get, the more negative the uh, function's going to get. Um, and then we talked about the y-intercepts that it represents the constant term. Okay.